church is the rump room. You know, now I'm just going to say before you leave your church, you need to pray, you need to meditate, you need to talk to somebody you trust. Uh, you need to bring up your concerns in a private manner that doesn't um, bring down the church, right? And consider other options before you just decide. Because there may be some things you can get, you know, fixed, get straightened away, but you're deciding to leave and you may be able to be a part of the solution. So, um, I'm just going to go ahead and say my list of things to run from when it comes to running from churches is woke pastors, right? And I'm going to explain, like, when you got a pastor that's sensitive to, like, too sensitive to making sure I don't hurt anybody's feelings, you can you have a problem with getting the truth at that church. Mm. You know what I'm saying? They're, they're scared to tell you the truth. They're scared to tell you what you need to know because they're so focused on woke culture. So woke is kind of like their God. They kind of serve the culture, and they're so focused on being progressive, and we want to progress. The word progressive is a nice word. But the way we use it in society today means do we want to um, put our mindset with culture? And God came to divide, to separate the the Christian walk, the Christian lifestyle from the world. He don't want us. He does. He wants us to be separate from the world. So if you're woke, a lot of times they want to include certain woke, like sinful aspects into your lifestyle because of. They want to be appeasable to society. So that's one that I would say you want to walk away from. And also uh, false doctrine. And um, obviously, if you know it's false doctrine, why are you at that church? I mean, you're just spectating. I mean, I visit certain churches, but I'm not about to be a member. Uh, pastors that are dictators, obviously, if you run the church your way and you're not a team player, and you don't want to have a con- if Pastors you can't even have a conversation with. If you disagree with something, you can't even have a conversation. Then it's like that's a that's a problem. And I'm not talking about like you got mega churches that you know the pastors got. That's a totally different thing than just I don't want my members to come talk to me. It's rude. It's disrespectful. It's against authority for them to address me. I'm gonna say what I want to say is disrespectful to the man of God. If they say anything to come against what I'm feeling, like that's obviously you need to run. Um, if you don't have anybody to counsel with at your church. And let me see. What is this? I don't know why I wrote that down. That's weird. Son not getting checked. I don't I don't know what that means, but it's in my notes. <laughs> Maybe God put it there. Maybe it's for somebody out there that needs to that has the revelation. Maybe there's some Daniels out there that can have some dreams. Tell me what it means in the comments below. Um so what do you think, man? What 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 would you say like, yo? If, you, if this is your type of church, you need to run. Well, like, this ain't the type of church. The first I would say is if there's just motivational speaking and there's no like word coming from scripture, it's time to go. Me personally, I feel like, you know, at least it's time to like, you know, we need to like do something else because I feel like then it ain't no edifying. You don't get edifying for motivation. You get more like just oh, I can do this. Like, you know, th- this is possible. Yeah. But, but you need to know the correct to, thing to do. Yeah, but it's like if it becomes motivation without like, dang, I can do this wrong or motivation, you just get motivation, but just no like, no correction and you're doing it the wrong way, you're going about the wrong way or this could possibly lead you to hell because hell is a real thing. But a lot of people like to shy away from, I guess, what you, um, hell preaching, I guess that's what they call it. Like, yeah. you know, preaching. Yeah, hell fire messages. And, you know, they like to do that, I guess, to, bring out their church, just preach motivation. But I feel that that's not a good thing. It's not a good thing if you preach in motivation without preaching sin. Or yeah, if they don't preaching. tell you the if they don't tell you real things yes. to watch out for, yes, that's scary. Because I always say, what if God never mentioned hell in the Bible? Exactly. <sighs> I, I feel like I would possibly go there. Just because like if he didn't mention it in the Bible, then I'm not even looking out for sin. Facts. I'm like, I ain't got nothing to worry about. Facts. Somebody coming to your house to rob the place. Well, there's no such thing as thieves and robbers. So I'm not I'm not getting myself ready for that. You know, so that's definitely, yeah, that's definitely dangerous. You gotta yeah. run. If they're not even telling you what to protect yourself from, it's like, bro, I know some people say, Yeah, the devil don't exist to my life. I'm like, yeah, that's kinda That's a dangerous way of thinking. It's a dangerous way of thinking because the devil's real. And exactly. you going the the worst punch is the one you don't see coming. Not facts. And one I like to expound on is the um, which one you said the, 
not being able to talk to the pastor. Yep. Like, I feel like if you if I can't speak to the pastor, and I ain't even talking, you know, of course, dealing with situations in the church, but if I'm a if I just came to the church and I gotta like set up like three interviews with the deacons <laughs> yeah. just and, and, and two phone calls and get sent the voicemail just to Deacon say Mike, hey to the pastor. Deacon Mike, go ahead and show you something, bro. Then Nah, I yeah. feel like it's that that's not a good church to be at because you should always be able to talk to the person that's ahead of your soul. Mm-hmm. Like you should always be able to go to that person for advice or counseling or anything. I shouldn't just be hearing your voice when it's time to um when it's time for you to preach. Yeah. If I got stuff to you know, if I got problems, real life situations that I need to come to you with, or if I just don't know what the scripture means, or if I got questions gosh. about your ministry, your ministry or what you preach. I should be able to come to you, and I you know I know you're a busy man, so I ain't even saying right then and there. But it just shouldn't it, it shouldn't take three weeks or three months for me to get to you, just to tell you that yeah man I'm going through a divorce, and it's like by the time I get to you the I'm, the divorce is over. So that's a big problem as well that I feel like you know you just ain't a church to be at if you can't speak to the pastor. Them my main two, the one I the most I can say, but you hit some pretty good points. But I just wanted to expound on that one. But yeah. Yeah, I want to differentiate the when you're talking to the when you have to you know do things to to get in contact with the pastor. Um, I'm really big on understanding what the pastor's dealing with too. I mean, I definitely agree with what you're saying, but some people may take it uh, just to clarify, like that if the pastor has so much going on, I think yeah, bro, you need to prioritize. You need. I do think the pastor need to. Now, I mean, I don't know if how you feel about this, but I do. Th- no, the pastor needs to set aside time where, you know, the seventh day, God rested from work, right? So to me, God, a man has to set aside time for his family. Um, He has to set aside time to, you know, not do, because you're still in ministry. You're just not like, like when, when's the time for you to get um no distractions with God? You know what I'm saying? Like you got to have that moment. But at the same time, um, the reason pastors sometimes want to shun away from their members is because they know that they don't have certain answers and they don't want to have that communication because they're they're kind of forming a dictatorship. And then it's like, nah, we can't have a conversation because I don't want you to catch on to some of the stuff I don't know. Because there are some churches that are doing it as like, like if you see SmackDown versus Raw, like you see these shows churches there are some churches out there that actually run this way it is a show it is a performance it is for money some churches out there are really and i don't mean believing christians that i mean some of them may kind of dabble into the show of it too but there are some literal people that they may not even be christians and they have churches open and they are establishing this as a performance and they know this and they may not even believe in god and you're not gonna have a conversation with them or they have their objections ready. It's like kind of like a salesman pitch, but they're not really listening to your problem. So you just got to be, um, you got to be understanding of that. Um, Michael Benson, I didn't know if you had some uh, input. I didn't want to, you know, move on to the next one if you had something that you wanted to say. No, I agree with Josh. I agree with Josh. You know, for the most part, everything he said. You know, if if you're a man of God, you got to be. If you're a man of God, and all you can do is preach, or all you can do is worship, but you can't be with people who need. Because preaching the gospel is feeding them. You know, it's, that's like the meat of the word, you feel me? And praising is a form of prayer and it's drawing God. But then it's like, like you said, if people got answers and you can't answer those questions, them personal questions, then what are you pastoring for? <laughs>